everyone. So today instead of Zoom, I'm going to do this video to explain the assignment that you are doing. You are going to be looking at uh, Chinese poetry from the Tang Dynasty. Now some of you who are Chinese might be really, really familiar with it, so you're going to be the experts on this because I cannot read the Chinese translation, me or the Chinese original, so I can only read these poems in translation. So um, what you're doing is you're going to be looking at two different poems. One is by Li Bai, a, a poet named Li Bai, and another is by a poet named Tu Fu. Um, he's also known as Du Fu, depending on which English translation it is. So, um, and these two poems have certain similarities and, of course, certain differences. Both of them are poets who were living during the Tang Dynasty and poets that have experienced a lot of, uh, let's say, um, societal kind of upheaval and problems and poetry was something that was um, actually encouraged and done as part of the imperial examinations of the day and so there's just a lot of poetry during Tang Dynasty and as you've known as we've talked about Tang Dynasty, bleh, Tang Dynasty definitely was the golden age of poetry so we're looking at just like a small small example of, of the wealth of the poetry that was written in Tang Dynasty. And so I encourage you to go back and look and see, especially if you can read Chinese, to look and read some of those poetry because um, it is really quite amazing. So we're gonna be looking at just two, okay? So let's go to the worksheet that you are going to see. Okay, so you will see a sheet like this attached to Edmodo and I will email it as well. So um, Li Bai's poem called Quiet Night Thought this is in English translation and in Chinese original. And then I have two videos here, which I'll show you in just a moment about. Um, one is sort of like a reading of the poem and then put it into a song, as far as I understand. Um, and then the other one is uh, English kind of uh, translation and reading it in Chinese. So those of you who um, are not Chinese speakers will help, kind of help you with learning that. So all of you speak a little bit Chinese, so that should be kind of nice. And I will exp um, show you the video in just a minute. So I'll attach these two into the uh, Edmodo links as well. Second poem, we have Tu Fu's Overnight at the River Pavilion, um, or English translation, and then original Chinese. These are simplified Chinese. Uh, if you read traditional Chinese, there's also places that you can find that, but for our purpose, we don't really need that. Um, and then you have two facts here at the bottom. Um, so these are the two best known po poets of the period uh, were Li Bai and Du Fu. So Li Bai was known for the romanticism of his poetry, and that means that he had this kind of, you know, when we mean romanticism, we don't mean necessarily like lovey-dovey love feelings. Uh, romanticism means um, looking at things and, um, and talking about how beautiful they are. So like if you were looking at this beautiful flower in the garden, and you're just admiring its beauty, or you're looking at a sunset, and you are you're saying, wow, this this is a tremendous, and you're using colorful words. And so romanticism is finding kind of a beautiful spirit in, in nature, um, as well as people. So it's a way to use words to describe it. Okay, so don't get confused romantic with romanticism, slightly different terms. So Levi was known for his uh, romanticism in his poetry, and then Du Fu, or Tu Fu, was seen as a Confucian moralist, meaning, um, you know, right and wrong type of, uh, thinking so what's right and wrong and how do you do the right things um he had a strict sense of duty towards society and so his poems inspired many chinese painters so you'll see a lot of the chinese paintings with du fu's poetry you probably have definitely seen it even if you didn't know that it was um du fu so the second uh, fact is that skill in the composition of poetry or the writing of poetry became required study for those wishing to pass imperial examinations. You guys remember those, right? This is where um, before the Tang Dynasty, we had uh, imperial examinations set up as something where you can um, move up in society if you pass certain examinations. So uh, this was kind of like social upward movement as we call it. And so writing poetry was seen as a big deal and as a skill that you needed to know if you wanted to move up in life. Okay, so very different from today. Nobody thinks that writing poetry is a skill to have to get a top, you know, CEO job or something, right? But um, it was also very heavily competitive, meaning they competed uh, with who wrote the best poetry and kind of like had judges to vote. And so, you know, having contests um, at 
banquets, or banquets, I can't read that word, and courtiers were coming. So poetry was this huge central idea in, um, in the Tang Dynasty and kind of in other dynasties as well. So we're looking at these two, um, and I'm just going to read them in English. You can, you're reading Chinese, you can read that. So, moonlight before my bed, perhaps frost on the ground. Lift my head and see the moon, lower my head and I miss my home. Not very poetic when you translate it into English. Plus, there's so many different translations of Chinese into English, different forms. So this is just one of them. Um, it's not the best. But for us who don't speak Chinese, this is what we have to deal with. So if you do read Chinese, go off with this one. Okay, and then we have overnight in the river pavilion. Evening is wake, uh, walking up the mountain paths. Ooh, what's this? What kind of uh, literary device is here? Okay, think about that. I lie in the high chamber he at the river gate, and clouds rest against the cliffs. Again, literary device. A lone moon swims among the waves. Full moon is falling through the sky. Cranes fly through the clouds. Wolves howl. I cannot find rest because I am powerless to amend a broken world. Okay, so now, after reading, read these a few times. I mean, they're literally a few lines long. Then, I want you to answer these questions for on a separate sheet of paper, please, if you can. Okay, so first one is how similar or different are translations? Those of you who speak Chinese. As I said, some of you speak Chinese. I mean, most of you speak Chinese, maybe not as well to read this, but um, when you hear it in the video, uh, I don't have a video for this one, actually. I couldn't find it, but when you hear, go off with the first poem. When you hear Chinese and English, how similar or different is it? It's just so far removed. So just give me your honest thoughts here in the first question. If you don't understand Chinese well enough to answer this question, skip it. But I know those of you who do speak Chinese well and can read, so if you skip this question, I will find you. Okay, what themes do these two poems have in common? Both of these are something to do with night, right? Something to do with thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give you those two hints. Um, and when I'm talking about themes, I'm talking about ideas that are kind of um, prevalent or ideas that pop up in both poems, okay? Third question, how does the first poem show the romanticism of the poem? Poet, okay? So remember, Li Bai, who wrote the first poem, is was kind of romantic or had romanticism in, in his poetry. How does a, this poem show us that romanticism, okay? Um, ask, your, ask your adults at home as well if you are stuck on this one. I'm sure that they will help you out as well. That'd be a good thing to talk to your parents about, or adults. Second one, how does the second poem show the poet's duty towards society? Okay, so we have another poet, Evening Thoughts, thinking, 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 and he is, whoops, he's thinking something about society. Okay, so I want you for question three, four, give me small details from the text to help you answer the question. You're not writing full paragraphs for this, but your response could be something like, the second poem shows the poet's duty towards society in the way that he says this, and this shows that he is worried about society, right? So that is um, your um, basically assignment for today. Um, the videos, uh, let me go back to here. The first video is you'll see this one, okay? Okay, so that's the video in the first one. She reads it and then she kind of explains it and reads it again. So um, we have that. Second poem is this kind of video and you'll see I'm going to play it and he reads it and I think it's a singing part. So just to help you kind of get into the, to see and read the Chinese original if you read a little bit but can't like read the characters. Okay, so that gives you kind of a glimpse of it. I'm gonna let you finish these videos by yourself. Okay, so yeah, just uh, on your own separate sheet of paper, please answer these 
uh, these four questions uh, to your best ability and send them in the Edmodo.